Hi, my name is Kevin Bonham, and this is video five in using Illustrator for scientists. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about one of the most useful features in Illustrator for scientists, and that's producing figures to present data. And you can do this uh, on a page layout, you can do it for a poster, um, but we're just going to take these graphs that I've prepared previously and set them up in a page layout. Uh, these graphs and these graphs are from a paper that we recently submitted. It's currently unpublished, so I've just removed the axis labels for now. Um, and these other graphs I made and then exported directly from a graphing program called PRISM. And I exported them as scalable vector graphic. You can also export data as EPS or even PDF, and Illustrator can still manipulate those graphs uh, quite effectively. Uh, so, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this data and I'm going to Command C or Control C if you're on a PC, and Control V. So copy and paste this uh, over here into this graph. I'm just going to move it over to the edge for now. Um, take these graphs, copy, paste, move those up to the top, and take these graphs, copy, paste. So you can see these have a slightly different uh, formats. These guys have white backgrounds. It's because I directly exported these. I've already removed the backgrounds from these. Uh, but we're going to talk about how to align these and also to navigate around. So this uh, artboard here, this white background, is what we call an artboard. You can see artboards up here. And this is currently 8.5 by 11, so it's the size of a regular sheet of paper. And sometimes you don't want to be zoomed out to see the whole thing, so we can zoom in and out to our particular area of interest by doing command and the plus key or command and the minus key to zoom around and as I mentioned before you can hold down the space bar and then click and drag to move around so I'm gonna be using that a lot so first things first all of these graphs are a little bit too big so if we select all of them and again holding the shift key just like you did with shapes in the previous tutorial we can shrink these graphs uh, to a more manageable size and I didn't hold the shift key do it this time and that will constrain their proportions so they don't get distorted if you're not holding shift you can do this weird stuff if you're holding shift then uh, they stay in the correct proportions so we want to do that we'll do the same for these graphs shrink them down a little bit and these guys will shrink them down a bit okay so in order to align your graphs. The first thing we're going to want to do is to make groups out of the graph. So right now I can select individual pieces of this graph and move it around and that's going to be really annoying because I want this graph to stay uh, together. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the components of this graph that I want to remain together and then we're going to say object group or command G so command G makes it a group and now if I just select one piece the whole thing moves together so I want to do that for all of these graphs command G you'll notice I'm not selecting any of the text except for the axis labels because I want to deal with those things separately I'm gonna be wanting to move those around relative to these graphs um, and even the key down here, uh, I don't necessarily want to have these um, as part of the graph. So this is going to be panel A, not panel B. So we'll move this out of the way and we'll take, we don't care about this axis label either. I'm just going to remove all of these. And we're going to move this graph over to here and shrink it down a little bit again, again holding shift key. Now what you'll notice is that I've now misaligned a bunch of these graphs. They're not really in a good position relative to each other. So what I want to do now is I want to align these graphs based on where their axes are. And in order to do this I'm going to drag out some smart guides. And so the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you're showing the rulers along the edges here and in order to do that, if you don't see them, you can go to View, Rulers, and if you don't have rulers, it'll say Show Rulers here, and the keyboard shortcut is Command-R. Um, but if you have these rulers, you can click on the ruler and drag out 
a smart guide. And this smart guide is now an object, so you can then click on it and drag it around, move it around. Uh, but we want to use this now to align the y-axes of this graph and this graph. And if I go to select this guy and start to move it, that's you'll see that smart guide is moving along with it. And that um, is going to be a problem when I'm first aligning. Later on, it can be really useful. But for now, what I want to do is I want to lock this object in place. You can do this for any object, not just uh, smart guides. But in order to do that, I'm going to go Object Lock Selection. Uh, and the keyboard shortcut is Command-2. And now I can no longer select this uh, smart guide. It will not move, um, and I can't even select it. But what I can do is I can take this graph, and I can line it up here with my smart guide. And I can do the same with this graph down here. You see it's got, oh, this group has something weird over there. I just ungrouped these objects. If I could delete whatever that was. OK, then I'm going to regroup these. So now these graphs are nicely aligned uh, with each other. Um, and now I want to do the same for these two graphs. So I'm going to drag another smart guide over here. I want the axis to be about here. And you can use the rulers to get exact proportions if you want. I'm not going to bother with that right now. I've got this smart guide selected. Command 2 locks it in place. And now I'm going to move this axis over top and this axis over top. Now, of course, I don't just, oops, I'm going to rotate that. I don't just want the y axis aligned. I also want the x axis aligned. And so in order to do that, we can just do the same thing up here. We can drag smart guide down from the top, command two locks it, and then I can make sure that both the X and the Y axis is aligned. And you can do the same thing for here, but I'm not gonna bother. So now that I've, these guides have fulfilled their purpose, I don't necessarily need them anymore. If you want to leave them, you can. And of course, if you wanna line up um, your panel C over here, you can leave these guides or you can drag them down and uh, remake them later um, if you want to align other figures on the page. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to uh, deal with the x-axis here and the labels. So actually, in order to do this, let's let's take one of my uh, other tables here. So we'll do this for panel C. Um, these graphs have these white backgrounds and this key that I don't really want, so I'm going to just select those and delete them. Um, and there's that D back there I don't want. And a couple of axis titles that I don't want. Okay, so now I'm going to take these graphs. I'm going to just, uh, oh, we want to group them, first of all. Group, group. So we'll bring this guy up here, and we'll bring this guy up here. So. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure these graphs are the same size, roughly. Um, and so when I exported them, they were the same size, uh, but if I've resized one and not the other independently, maybe I had this one kind of small, and I want it to be the same size as this guy, I'm, I want to drag this guy up and I want to align their axes and then make them the same size, but while I do that, if I'm trying to select this guy, I might select the one in the back, and that's going to be annoying. So instead, I'm going to do the same thing that I do with the smart guides, and I'm going to lock this with Command-2. And so now this is no longer selectable, and it's going to stay in the same place. And I can just take this graph, grab it, holding Shift, and then I can align the axes. You can see the y-axis moved, so you're going to have to fiddle around with it a little bit. But we can make these graphs now roughly the same size. And then now I want to unlock this graph. And so in order to unlock all, you can use the keyboard shortcut uh, Alt-Command-2 or Alt-Control-2 or go to Object, Unlock All. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And of course, that unlocks the, um, the smart guides as well. So if I want to make sure that I don't accidentally screw those around, I'm going to just relock those. So now I have these two graphs, and I've got them aligned. I want this graph oops, to line up with my graphs from panel A. 
and I want this graph to line up with panel C as well as the y-axis with the top of uh, panel C. So I'm going to make some more smart guides here. I'm going to select them, lock them in place, and now I can move this graph along with this alignment. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that A and C are aligned with each other. So we could do this by dragging a smart guide out and aligning them, but for objects that are roughly the same size, like text, it's much easier to use the align tools. And so in order to do this, I can select both of these objects, and then this symbol is the align symbol. You can also find it in Window Align. And you have a bunch of different options here. If you have the control bar here, I've talked about in a previous tutorial, if you have two objects selected, usually align will be one of your options. So you can pull that out from here as well. Uh, but if you have the align panel open, you can see these lines along these different objects and they tell you that you can do different things. So I can align along the left edge horizontally and the pictures make it fairly clear what's going on. With these guys, I want to align them to the top. I want a to stay in the same place and I want C to come up to where it is. So I'm going to vertically align them to the top. So if I do that, you can see C jumps right up to where A was. The way that these align tools work, uh, the behavior is pretty consistent. So if you align to the top, it will go to where the topmost text is. If you align to the bottom, it will go to where the bottommost text is. And if you try to align in the center, it'll go uh, sort of an average between these two. So you can see if I do this, uh, A and C end up in the same place, but sort of an average height of the two. So we want that to be aligned to the top. So next, what I want to do is I want to redo uh, the axis of this graph. And so I've got this group, so in order to select individual things, I need to ungroup them, Command-Shift-G, just select these, and I'm going to get rid of them. But So I'm going to replace the text now with text of my own. Let's call this A. I'll make another one B and another one C. Oops. OK, and so now I want to have these guys all aligned and evenly distributed uh, among these things. So I can try to get these to fit properly. You might have smart guides enabled um, you can uh, activate Smart Guides Command U, and what that'll do is it'll give you these little green lines um, that tell you where the alignments are. So you can try to use those if you like. You can align them all the way that we did with the figure labels, align them all to top. But another really great thing that you can do that helps with graphs that maybe have a lot of labels uh, or with other things is that you can also evenly distribute these. So I've tried to line these individual letters up with the little scale bars there or with the graph markers there but they're a little bit off and so one one of the things we can do is we can evenly distribute these and we use these distribute objects in the align window so we want to distribute these evenly along the center and if we do that now these are all equidistant apart uh, doesn't necessarily make sense for an axis label, but if you're making a legend and you want them to be um, evenly distributed, so uh, for instance, we take these objects here. Let's say we have a third label and we want these, these don't have to line up necessarily with a tick on a graph, but we want them to be evenly distributed. We can evenly distribute and you see what that does is it evenly distributes all of the objects we selected but if we instead make this a group make this a group oops and make this a group now we can evenly distribute these and they have a nice uh, alignment we can do the same vertically obviously if we instead want this axis to be this way we can align them to the left edge and then vertically distribute them all according to the center. So you can use the layout tools of Illustrator to make really nice looking graphs and to lay out a page in a very even way that's really visually pleasing. Uh, so that is aligning 
and uh, hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.